So I want to show you a really neat demonstration that I actually include into a lab with my students to show them how size and shape of an object will not affect density as long as you're dealing with the same material. So today what I have is I have a cylinder of copper and I have a cube of copper. And I want to show you that the densities of these will be relatively the same. Now chances are these may be off just by a little bit just because they were probably not mined from the same copper mine. So there could be some impurities, but you'll get the idea that the densities are gonna be relatively the same. We'll do the best we can to see if we can get them exact. Now, the accepted value of copper is about 8.96 grams per cubic centimeter. So in this case, we are going to round to the proper tenths place with this. We'll be in the nine range with the densities by the time that we're done. So I'm gonna start out with the copper cylinder and here's how we do it. Mass, really easy. So we turn on our balance, make sure you're on grams. You take the cylinder, put it onto the balance and that turns out to be 8.4 grams. So the mass of the cylinder, 8.4 grams. Now the volume, because this is an irregular object, you need to do water displacement. So what I've done here is I've put my water level in my graduated cylinder up to seven milliliters. So my beginning value is 7.0 milliliters for the volume of the water. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cylinder, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed, try to kind of slide that down without making too much of a splash. There we go, not bad. Bring this down, okay. And if the bottom of the meniscus there, kind of hard to get uh, you know, an accurate reading with the phone, it's about 7.9 milliliters. So what that turns out to be, that turns out to be a 0 0.9 milliliter volume. Because with water displacement, you take the beginning value of the water level, you take the ending value of the water level, subtract them, that turns out to be 0 0.9 milliliters. Now, in order to get the density, density equals mass over volume. That's gonna be 8.4 grams divided by 0 0.9 milliliters. So we take our calculator, put those values in, 8.4 divided by 0.9, and that turns out to be about 9.3, repeating. Now we're gonna round properly. We're gonna go to the tenths place. The three in the hundredths place has no impact on the three in the tenths place. So my density here is 9.3. Your numerator, that unit goes first. My denominator unit goes second. So my density here for the cylinder, 9.3 grams per milliliter. Now I'm gonna move over to the copper cube. Copper cube, put the cube on the balance. I get a mass of 145.9 grams. Now the volume, we have to do length times width times height. This is a regular sided object. So you take your ruler, using centimeters, that's 2.5 centimeters. Now, because this is a cube, every side's gonna be the same. So 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5. So 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5 we put that in the calculator. It should turn out to be 15.625. Now I'm gonna keep it that number because that's not my final answer. My density will be my final answer. I'm gonna keep that exactly as is. 15.625 cubic centimeters. I don't wanna round right now because if I round that number, I may round myself out of my proper answer. Now, I have my mass and now I have my volume. 
density equals mass over volume, 145.9 grams, divided by 15.625 cubic centimeters. The cubic centimeters comes from the three centimeters that I multiplied together. Now you'll notice that I used milliliters over here with the cylinder because I was dealing with some water. Over here I'm dealing with my solid cube. It's cubic centimeters and milliliters, they're interchangeable. You could use either one. All right, so let's put our numbers in. 145.9 divided by 15.625. And that actually works out exactly perfect. 9.3, again, that three in the hundreds place does not impact that three in the tens place. So my density here is 9.3 grams per cubic centimeter. They're actually identical. Now, my calculations are definitely a little bit off from the accepted value of what copper actually should be. But what I like about this is that the numbers that I came up with are identical. The fact that the cylinder and the cube are completely different shapes and completely different sizes, the fact that they are the same exact material and the fact that the densities did not change, that indicates that that is going to be a static relationship. Static relationships look like this. If you were gonna look at a graph of a static relationship, Static relationship is the horizontal line. So you would have the material of copper, the material of copper, the fact that there are different sizes and shapes has no impact on the density. That's a classic static relationship when dealing with relationships and certain values that go into the density of materials. So something like this is a really, really handy thing to do to show the kids firsthand that size and shape have no impact on density because my densities are essentially identical. Even though they're off a little bit from the accepted value, what we calculated in class was absolutely perfect. All right, so hopefully this is something that you might want to do with your own students in class, and we'll talk to everyone soon.